and welcome to this webinar introducing Progress in Geography Key Stage 3, which is being presented by series editor David Gardner. Before David begins, we just wanted to introduce the resources that David will be talking about. So, the series comprises one textbook covering the whole of Key Stage 3, three workbooks, one per year, and Boost Digital Resources, which contain everything that teachers need for planning, teaching, assessment and homework. Originally published in 2018, we've now published a fully updated second edition, which David is going to talk through today. The series is also accompanied by skills and field workbooks for extra depth and practice. Now over to David. Hi everybody, welcome to this introduction to Progress in Geography at Key Stage 3, um, second edition. For its design, this session is designed for anyone new to the course. I'm David Gardner, uh, and I'll be taking you through um, all about progress in geography uh, and the different sections that it offers. Uh, who am I? Uh, I've been second teacher for 28 years. I was the national curriculum advisor for geography at QCA, QCDA. Uh, from 2005-2011 and then went to teacher education at the Institute Goldsmiths and the Open University. I'm an active member of the GA, a GA consultant and uh, uh, an educational author. Um, some of the books that uh, are shown on this screen um, I will be using in this session, obviously uh, the second edition of Progress in Geography, but also the book that I wrote in 2022 for the GA, Planning a Coherent 11-16 Geography Curriculum. Um, so the work that I do with schools uh, is around curriculum design uh, and I think these publications demonstrate that process in terms of theory into practice uh, with progress in geography very much being about the practice. The key elements of um, what progress in geography offers uh, is it um, we call it progress in geography intentionally because the whole thing is about progress where um, the whole book has been designed to support pupils to make progress uh, in their journey to becoming a geographer and all the units and lessons in the book uh, of the course are, are interconnected uh, to progress pupils knowledge understanding and skills throughout key stage three we take a, a total inquiry approach um, a double spread is a lot one lesson although sometimes we have uh, double lessons uh, with, with two spreads. There are 180 lessons in total in a single book. The advantage, one of the advantages of a single book, of course, is you can re reuse a uh, link to prior learning, reuse resources uh, in different lessons, building on earlier understanding. Uh, the textbook is supported by Boost materials. Uh, and what I'll do in this session is take you through uh, all these things and, and the highlights um, of, of what each element does. So on our journey in terms of curriculum, this is where we've come from. Um, this is uh, uh, an example of a school plan at Key Stage 3, um, where we didn't really think about sequencing necessarily. Uh, and it's very difficult to see in a lot of the old Key Stage 3 plans when I work with schools, how each unit is interconnected, um, how progression has been planned for and, and how it's been, how the lessons have been sequenced, the units have been sequenced. Trevor Bennett since 2005 made this comment about sequencing in the context of a curriculum, um, saying it's, a, it's essentially about the order in which the content and activities are introduced and organised. And while a sequence of some sort is inevitable, within any curriculum, so this model here is a, is, a, is a sequence, progression in learning is not an inevitable outcome. So for instance, if we look at this, you, you might notice that uh, climate change is done in uh, year seven, second unit in year seven, and weather and climate's not been, uh, not been studied until uh, year nine. So students, uh, uh, if, if this was the model used at a school, would study climate change without being introduced to the concept of climate. So um, why is that? Well, the national curriculum used to separate content from any statements of progression in terms of national curriculum levels, um, and that made it difficult. It didn't support uh, people to, to plan a, a coherent curriculum. So where are we going? Well, Ofsted are now um, 
now have realised uh, that curriculum is important, and uh, this is a statement I particularly like that they produced about the, the three I's, intent, implementation and impact. The curriculum conceived, taught and experienced. Uh, and they make the point in, in the bottom line there that the inspection framework starts from the understanding that all these steps are connected. And uh, progress and geography is very, is written very much embedding this definition of curriculum. In my book, uh, Planning a Coherence 1116 Geography Curriculum that I wrote for the GA, um, I had this uh, seven stage process uh, and we wrote uh, the first edition of Progress in Geography and, and now the second edition with this very much in mind. So we have a clear vision um, uh, and set clear goals. We design uh, a curriculum, sequence curriculum, and then the lessons are developed to bring that curriculum intent to life. Uh, Progress in Geography also uses this uh, guidance produced by the GA on progression and assessment. Uh, this latest iteration, uh, I worked on it with John Hopkin and uh, the uh, assessment and examination uh, special interest group of the GA, which I'm chair of. Uh, we worked on this and I've used this, uh, we've used this to develop the framework, curriculum framework, progression framework for progress in geography. This framework has um, three progression strands to it, contextual world knowledge, understanding, and geographical inquiry uh, and we wrote uh, expectations for each of those strands for a seven-year-old, nine-year-old, 11-year-old, 14-year-old and 16-year-old. Uh, those There are those key aspects of achievement, world knowledge, understanding, geographical inquiry and those, um, those three progression strands emerge from the aims of the national curriculum um, develop contextual knowledge, understand processes and competency in geographical skills. Ofsted um, in the uh, 2023 subject report had this to say about schools that used the aims um, as part of their curriculum planning. In a school where curriculum thinking was stronger, leaders had considered the substantive content of the national curriculum and its aims. Um, we virtually finished this second edition of um, Progress in Geography when that offset report came out and um, it's very pleasing to see a lot of the things that we'd integrated into the course. Um, uh, we, we think we are um, covering in this course. What we've done in this edition is uh, we have an introductory page called What We're Trying to Achieve that shares with the students what it is to be a geographer, uh, explains to them that progress in geography will help them to develop, to understand the interconnected world that we, we live in, and identifies the three progression strands, curriculum understanding, uh, application of geographical skills and inquiry, and world knowledge. Uh, the flap on the book for the vision identifies the sort of learning experiences uh, that students will experience in order to work towards progressing in those three particular strands. That's those three progression strands, those aims of the national curriculum, um, connect to the aims of GCSE. Uh, so know like no geographical material, think like a geographer and study like a geographer, which of course interlink with the, the AOs of GCSE, similarly at A level. So there's built in progression in the system and using progress and geography as a foundation for progression at GCSE and A level uh, is viable. So there are the three, three progression strands that permeate the topics. So the, the topics in the curriculum um, embed those three progression strands. Uh, each topic for each year uh, running through the course. Our starting point was the substantive and pr uh, procedural knowledge of the national curriculum. Uh, and we began in 2017, when we did the first edition of the, of the book, to use these as a starting point to try and establish a sensible, coherent um, sequence uh, of lessons for the course to pr produce the really the building blocks for progression 
11 to 16. Uh, and these are the uh, units 1 to 18 in progress in geography. Um, and um, I've said again, I've said something about sequencing. Uh, and first of all, it's complex, which indeed it is. Um, but when you consider the curriculum as a progression model, um, it starts to make it easier for students to make progress and for the teachers in the classroom to be clear uh, on how each lesson uh, leads to progress for pupils. Um, and they also make the point there needs to be a clear progression map for each subject. Well, for progress in geography, we have a what we call a progression framework. So at the bottom um, are the age related expectations for an 11 year old, which we've taken and uh, adapted from the GA's progression framework. And at the top are the age related expectations for a 14 year old. Uh, and the, this progression framework maps out the uh, different units of work in terms of how they contribute and take responsibility for or introduce um, one of the uh, three progression strands or indeed all three progression strands in particular units as well as identifying particular assessment opportunities. So um, we also link in the AOs for GCSE to demonstrate how the progress will continue from GCSE. So there's the statement of, of where we hope pupils will get to in terms of world knowledge um, at the end of the course and understanding and um, and a geographical inquiry and geographical skills. So the first stage of planning for pupil progress in terms of uh, progress and geography is this strategic level, this progression framework and the vision of the, of, uh, of the course and what it stands for. It's really important that that vision is shared with pupils on a regular basis, which is why it's a flap in the book when, and there are activities in the book at various stages where pupils are asked what they've done in a particular unit or sequence of lessons that they feel has contributed to one of those elements within the vision. At the medium term plan, a chunk of the vision, a stepping stone towards uh, what you're trying to achieve are unit, unit plans. Each unit of work is assigned responsibilities for chunk of the vision uh, for each progression strand. So unit two on natural resources, for example, is responsible for introducing the concepts of sustainability. Unit eight on development introduces development, the concept of development, but also progresses understanding of sustainability at a global scale by investing the UN's uh, sustainable development goals. And each of those plans is composed of a sequence of 10 lessons. Um, each phase of a lesson provides a chunk of geographical learning, each providing a stepping stone in learning towards what that unit's trying to achieve. Uh, each lesson in the sequence can make a contribution to the unit's responsibilities for progression. Each lesson requires a clear sequence of activities to support students' progress towards the end of the lesson. And we've mapped those out um, in, in the unit plans and uh, lesson plans, as you'll see shortly. So the vision statement and the progression framework um, is providing a curriculum intent, um, which is implemented through the planning documents and the student book and the workbooks, um, and then um, identify an impact in terms of the end of unit reviews and any assessments uh, that you might want to use that are available on Boost. Ofsted in uh, 2021 in its research report uh, made this statement about devising a curriculum that um, it needs to identify both the substantive knowledge, um, the, the content, if you like, of, uh, of, the, of your curriculum, but interwoven with disciplinary knowledge. The um, recent, uh, most recent subject report um, re-emphasizes this, uh, the, the need to develop both content and disciplinary knowledge. The GA have produced a uh, framework for school curriculum that also uses these terms disciplinary knowledge and substantive knowledge uh, and, and spells those out. It identifies um, in terms of disciplinary knowledge the key concepts knowing that. 
um, and it identifies place, space, earth systems and environments as overarching concepts. It also identifies geographical practice, knowing how, how geographers find out things, how they work like, how to work like a geographer, and also identifies with disciplinary knowledge, geographical application. Unfortunately, the 2023 Ofsted reports uh, identified that disciplinary knowledge was something that was a, a, a weak area of curriculum thinking for both primary and secondary schools. Uh, and a lot of schools didn't really um, develop any underpinning geographical concepts in their curriculum design process. In progress in geography, thinking like a geographer uh, is, is paramount and that's shared right at the beginning on page one of the book is shared with students uh, and will be revisited through through the through the course about the big ideas and concepts of geography and how um, they're all interconnected so for kids geography, have place space scale the earth systems and then um, for human processes economy development population and sustainability so unit three introduces the concept of economy from local to global. Unit five introduces the earth systems uh, under the heading, why do we need to understand how the earth works? Unit eight, uh, which is a really pivotal unit in the whole course, uh, introduces what is development. And unit nine introduces the concept of population. Ofsted also identified that the, the, the idea of place was often poorly planned in the curriculum. Um, many schools trying to cover many places. Um, using uh, a country or an area, say Nepal, to look at earthquakes and nothing else. So telling a single story about each place rather than putting it in any sort of regional context. Um, a key feature of progress in geography <coughs> is that one of the progression strands really is aimed at developing the concept of space not just world knowledge but understanding of places and we have four uh, place-based units one on Russia one on uh, an Asia, one on uh, Africa and one on the Middle East we, and they have, all have a key focus um, in terms of what they're doing my thinking for that right at the onset of devising uh, progress in geography uh, was a was a chapter in a book debates in geography education by Alex Standish and this diagram was quite transformational for me uh, because the, the the role that the regional units play is they provide a context to progress understanding of themes like the biosphere the lithosphere or population um, but not in isolation by studying a region it's possible to develop an understanding to see how uh, the concept of population or the concept of development interconnects with with other uh, big ideas in geography and seeing them investigate them in one place uh, makes it easier for pupils to progress their understanding of how these concepts interconnect. So this is, I think, is a really key feature of, of the course. And what I've done here is mapped out uh, the concepts and where they appear in different units. The first five units uh, are laying a foundation, uh, notionally with your seven pupils of uh, understanding about weather and climate, the economy, <coughs> how the earth works, and then start to develop, uh, progress the ideas of those within the context of Russia. But as you can see in terms of the, the number of, of concepts, the, the higher up you go the course, the greater the complexity, the greater hopefully of understanding. So there are more interconnections to see in, in developing ideas of concepts. Um, I, I see this very much as uh, this book, this course, as a, as, a, as a narrative about the world. And if you, just like in a, in a novel where you're introduced to characters, in a novel um, and as you work through the chapters of the novel you get to know the, the characters more uh, the same can be applied to concepts uh, as you progress under, you progress understanding by seeing how con a concept once you've got a handle on what a concept beginning to see what a concept is about you begin to see how they interconnect with other concepts so this is a key building block of progression 
through progress in geography. Um, procedural knowledge is as well is is uh, an area for development according to Ofsted. Procedural knowledge um, was rarely planned for in the same way as substantive knowledge was the finding from Ofsted um, in in this review. Uh, in progress and geography, um, procedural knowledge is planned for. Uh, we've thought very carefully about where something's introduced and where it's 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 progressed. In particular, when it when it comes to uh, working like a geographer uh, in terms of geographical inquiry. Uh, there's the, the first box there is the statement from page one. And uh, what I've done uh, that focused in on uh, the sort of opportunities that pupils will experience to, de to develop those skills from the from the, the vision flap. And that identifies that pupils will get the chance to expand their geographical vocabulary, uh, investigate and ask their own geographical questions. Uh, investigate the world through increasingly complex geographical inquiry. And inquiry in particular is, is an area that, that, that the Ofsted report picked up on and identified the fact that in most schools, geographical inquiry was either ignored completely or mistaken for asking pupils to reach a research topic themselves. In, uh, in progress in geography, Every lesson is a geographical inquiry. It starts with a key question to investigate and the final activity requires pupils to answer that key question. In every lesson, uh, they are presented with uh, genuine, real, uh, authentic geographical data. Uh, the variety is shown in this infographic here where I've worked out some titles. So there, there are 144 uh, perspectives from different people. Um, they've been researched. We've approached those people to get permission to often to, to, to use their quotes in the book. Uh, there are 65 news articles that are presenting points of view. There are quotes, six quotes from from different books. There are company leaflets that are used uh, as, as well as uh, 24 ordnance survey maps, 48 atlas maps and so on. So there's a wide range of geographical data. And again, on this infographic, there's a quote from the Ofsted report uh, in schools where practice was strongest. Pupils were given authentic geographical data and taught how to use it to answer geographical questions, which is very much a, a main thrust of, of the course. This is illustrated in the back cover of the book. This, this shows the layout. So each lesson starts with an inquiry question. Uh, um, learning objectives are provided um, in the planning documents. Uh, the phase of the lesson that links to a particular objective is made clear for teachers. The, a rich variety of real data. It's real data about real people and places. And the activities are provided to make sense of that geographical data in a thought out coherent and sequenced way. Many lessons identify uh, future learning. Uh, and certainly the review lesson at the end of each unit identifies future learning. Key terms are highlighted and explained in a, a, a newly developed um, glossary. This is the very first lesson uh, and we're very upfront in saying what this course is about. So the very first lesson is what is it? What is, what is a geographer uh, and starts to explain some of the resources um, that they've got in order to investigate geography, identifies and explains the, the map flaps to the book. Uh, and gets them started and thinking about what it is to be a geographer and introduces the inquiry questions. Basically, um, the, the I wrote about this in uh, in my uh, GA book, and there's a quote from the GA book that basically uh, inquiry can be embedded in a curriculum at three interconnected scales. So at a long term strategic plan view, uh, you can see the whole course as uh, a geographical inquiry and I'll, I'll, I'll illustrate that in a moment. Um, each unit is responsible for a chunk of the learning. Um, each unit is an inquiry. Uh, the first lesson has overarching uh, objectives for the whole unit. Each unit has an inquiry title question and in the review lesson ultimately pupils will answer that overarching inquiry question for the units. Each lesson in the sequence uh, makes up the that makes up the unit provides stepping stones of data and opportunities to make sense of. So each lesson is an inquiry 
and, and they interconnect to lead to the to the review lesson, to support geographical thinking, to support pupils' capabilities to answer the unit's uh, question. So here's the second lesson of the course. How do you work like a geographer? Uh, this second lesson introduces the uh, importance of geographical data and the sort of work that uh, geographers do, and then uses one of the lessons in the course for pupils to identify what are the key stepping stones? What are the key stages in the inquiry process? But the lesson also provides an article from The Guardian from September 2022, uh, which uh, which I, I came across. I was writing uh, this lesson and I found it to be very useful. So um, it's identifying the fact that with what's happening in the world, with the state of the planet and uh, the lives of the people who live in it and identifying climate disasters, migration and so on. Um, geographers are really important. Employers will continue to seek out and, and, and need uh, geographers. And we come back to that. We can come back to that uh, statement, as we'll see in a moment. Each lesson. Each lesson plan in the boost material, downloadable as a word file in boost, um, begins with and about the lesson box. This identifies for teachers uh, what, it, what are the key things about this lesson. So this takes you through uh, the final lesson of the course, um, 18.9. Uh, what's the future of our planet? A geographer's view. So the first lesson of the course, 1.1, introduce what it is to, a, to be a geographer. The final lesson uses what they've learned. Hopefully pupils will be able to use what they've learned in the course to to do the activities in this particular lesson to to come to their own view about what's the future um, of, of the planet and and here here is that lesson uh, the the diagram comes is a diagram produced by uh, Lewis and Maslin which they kindly allowed us to use that identifies the process that the world's uh, been going through uh, in human existence and the crucial tipping points uh, we are now at and a quote from their book uh, about the Anthropocene. <coughs> and the final activity uh, in the final lesson of the book um, asked students to go back to that Guardian newspaper article uh, that they were introduced to in the second lesson of the course and ask them to, to explain um, why they now think, uh, having completed the course, uh, geography is a really important subject in terms of uh, thinking about that future. The very final lesson, 18.10, introduces GCSE uh, geography and uses the same uh, objectives that are now outcomes here, um, having completed the course from the very first lesson. So demonstrating that whole book of course inquiry from lesson one to lesson 10. So as geographers, having completed the course, they can now do those things. They know what it is to be a geographer. They can ask geographical questions. They can conduct geographical inquiries. Uh, they know about people and places around the world. They can use uh, procedural knowledge. Uh, and this shows them the aims of GCSE and gets them to think about how what they've done in that foundation in progress and geography supports them uh, to begin a GCSE course. Uh, this is unit nine. Unit nine um, introduces the, this is schema work. It, it introduces uh, the, the, the units and explains the processes the, the, uh, that they'll study, the concepts of population and the different elements of population, um, and also the uh, world locational knowledge that are developed in this unit and the resources that are used. So each unit begins with that overview for teachers to, to understand what are the stepping stones uh, that are being developed in this unit towards the vision for the whole course. Um, the lesson, each lesson, the about Essentially, this is uh, lesson 9.1, explains that this is a create a need to know lesson for unit nine, designed to engage and spike pupils' curiosity and introduce key ideas of the unit and how it interconnects directly with the final lesson, the review lesson, uh, lesson 9.10. Uh, here is uh, the fir that first lesson and one of the things we provide a range of resources. We're talking about the, the, the world's population now hitting 8 billion. 
Uh, we've got a couple of articles about that. And we've got a graph around the edge of the page showing the, the world's population change and a table demonstrating which years the world's population increased by a million. And then um, we left this to the very last minute in publishing the book. <coughs> we have uh, the data from Worldometer, the Worldometer website for the 4th of December 2023. And one of the activities they do in this lesson is compare what the population was on the 4th of December 2023, going live to the world meter when they actually studied this lesson to see how how much the world's populations increased in that period of time. In the review lesson, um, the review lesson is designed, you can use it as an end of unit assessment, uh, but it, it's, the, it's that review process of the inquiry process that, that we're developing here. Uh, so there is a variety of questions and activities and thinking about how and getting students to see holistically what they've learnt interconnects. Uh, and they're also introduced to some of the ideas of Hans Rosling in the Factfulness book. And here is that lesson. So there's a mind mapping activity uh, for the key elements of population. And this also um, interconnects with the previous unit because they, they are asked in one of the activities to add their thoughts about development uh, to this mind map. Um, and the very final activity in this lesson takes them back to world meters. Um, uh, they re-record the, uh, what the world population was when they started this unit. Uh, and then they go onto the World Meter website and see what the world population is when they finish this unit uh, to see how in a few weeks uh, how much the world's population had increased. And each um, each review lesson has these future learning boxes. So future learning in progress in geography. How will they progress their understanding of population and where will that happen? and uh, future learning at GCSE. How, how will they further their, their understanding of population on a, on a GCSE course? <coughs> In Boost, there are review uh, activities uh, that take that they, they can do, use to record their answers in the review lessons. So there's a copy of the mind map, for example. Uh, there's, a, there's a box, future learning box for them to record uh, how they think where they will develop their, their learning in, in the future uh, in other units of the course. In uh, unit five, why do we need to understand how the earth works? The sixth and seventh lessons are an example of something I referred to earlier, the double lesson. Uh, in the double lesson, this is a double lesson about how people are affecting rainforests. Uh, and as the, as the about the lesson notes provide for teachers. This is the first time, first lesson in the course that uh, pupils are exposed to the interface of human and physical geography and, and that the, the impact of that on the environment. Uh, so they're presented with a wide range of, uh, of geographical data here. Let's, let's have a look at this. So uh, the first lesson, uh, no activities here because the activities come in on the on the second spread. So uh, a variety of resources looking at uh, the views of two presidents in Brazil and their impacts on deforestation rates in the Amazon, uh, a satellite image uh, and, and, and two graphs. And the second lesson, uh, put this in to, to illustrate this, a second lesson where they're presented with a variety of views. Um, so real people saying uh, real things um, that they make sense of. Uh, the activities are very much geared to, to looking and thinking about those different points of view, which is another big theme of the course. Uh, and then they're introduced that as an introduction to a decision making activity. Uh, we've tried to develop a, a progressive approach to decision making as an activity as part of geographical inquiry throughout the book. Um, I explain uh, this is uh, myself with uh, with Ellie Barker, one of the authors of the course, the curious geographer um, as well, who's uh, who, who interviewed me about uh, inquiry and about the first units uh, and they're available on the Hodder uh, YouTube channel. I've put a link into it there and, and I explain how that works with with uh, a focus on the on the first unit. But that is for the first edition. Procedural knowledge um, also uh, in terms of 
uh, of skill development is something that Offset identified and, and leaders, uh, according to Offset, struggle to sequence geographical uh, procedural knowledge in their curriculum. Uh, difficulty choosing when uh, to, to do uh, particular skills, atlas work or aerial photos or whatever, uh, and it was rarely assessed. Um, that's nothing new. In 2013, Leszek Kavashkov, who's the previous uh, uh, in, in head of uh, geography inspection uh, at, at, uh, at QCA, had this to say about map skills, how they were poorly developed, uh, often found students unfamiliar with ordnance survey maps uh, in far too many schools. Map use is limited to specific exam requirements, uh, quite, a, quite a damning in, indictment of uh, the use of maps in 2013. Uh, I, one of the things that was developed was a uh, um, descriptors of what outstanding looks like in terms of geography. And this is one of my favourite phrases from, from Ofsted, and I've incorporated it into the vision for progress in geography. Maps at a variety of scales are used frequently as a matter of routine and are a intrinsic part of learning in geography. I really believe that. So this is the first unit of progress in geography. What is a geographer? Ten lessons. Um, this unit is seen as a transition assessment. The whole unit can be seen as an assessment from key stage two to key stage three. It, it helps you identify what your new cohort know, understand and can do, uh, as well as establishing a baseline and foundation for procedural knowledge uh, related to the expectations for an 11 year old. And a key feature of progress in geography are map flaps. Uh, so these flaps open out with uh, an ordnance survey map and one atlas map uh, for a list of the different maps there and they are used through different repeatedly through different lessons in a progressive way so here's a lesson on uh, in the first unit looking at uh, using an ordnance survey map the southampton map with an aerial photograph of Southampton, and they identify places on, 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 on either and provide good references of those locations. The Southampton map is used in Unit 10 to compare uh, Southampton, uh, the Ordnance Survey map of Southampton, uh, with an 1890 Ordnance Survey map of Southampton. And in the following lesson, uh, 10.7, comparing ordnance survey maps of different scales with the Southampton map flap as part of looking at uh, an, an urban model. This is uh, a lesson about uh, coastal deposition uh, with an aerial photograph of sperm Point, and there is a uh, ordnance survey 150,000 flap showing uh, sperm points and there's a whole activity there where, where students compare the two and produce their own uh, sort of uh, land use sketch map um, of, of sperm points in terms of how it was formed and how it's used. Uh, this is a lesson in, um, it's actually unit 15, that's an image from, uh, from the first edition. Uh, so an activity using aerial photographs, ground level photographs, a 1 to 25,000 map and the flap, um, flap B of Helvellyn. Uh, and this activity is, is consolidating their understanding of, of glacial <coughs> erosional features. And the ultimate activity here is to identify the paths that they think valley glaciers took in that landscape. Uh, but, but and a good example of using a flap with the resources in the book. But also it's important, I think, to use other topographical maps. This is a topographical map of uh, Fox Glacier in New Zealand. Uh, and I put a link in there. It's possible to see the whole of New Zealand, uh, their equivalent of ordnance survey maps. They're all online that you can zoom in and out of. Uh, and there's also a quote there from a really excellent uh, geography teacher in New Zealand who makes his own videos and he's got a very good one that I've linked to there uh, where he's actually at the Fox Glacier. So a wide range of resource again. GIS uh, identified in the Ofsted report as, as uh, something uh, that's rarely taught in schools uh, for a variety of reasons. And uh, this is something that we've uh, developed in progress in geography in a in, in a natural way. We have one lesson to introduce it, but then we embed GIS activities uh, through the book. Um, 
so here's the introductory lesson. This is in uh, the third unit, um, uh, looking at uh, firstly introducing what GIS is, uh, and then giving a couple of examples of how economic activities that they've already studied in the unit. So one is how the port of Southampton uh, use GIS, and the other is about how farming uh, use GIS. Uh, and then there's an activity where they use, can log into Google Earth uh, and look at South, the port of Southampton um, as, as part of the investigation to become familiar with the navigation tools. Um, and this is the about the lesson section. Wherever possible, we try and uh, point teachers in the direction of uh, other resources and ideas that uh, that they can uh, that they can use and think about in terms of um, pro, uh, using GIS. Um, here's uh, here's um, a, the lesson where a long profile is used um, using. Um, GIS. If I click on the link I've put in there, um, hopefully you'll be able to see this. So this is a, an ArcGIS tool. So I just click into the source of the River Tees uh, and then it works out and demonstrates the long profile. You can do this for any river, uh, any sort of landscape feature um, within um, within the uh, within the UK using this tool. Um, <coughs> uh, this is a lesson uh, 9.4 about why countries conduct a census uh, and one of the activities in this lesson is to visit the Office for National Statistics where uh, GIS is used. So here's a GIS um, where you can select your local um, area uh, and then the GIS um, demonstrates what's happening in terms of population and the economy and so on um, from the census data. So both are examples of um, embedding GIS in lessons. Fieldwork. Again, fieldwork, something that uh, apparently, according to Ofsted, leaders have done very little curriculum thinking about fieldwork. Uh, we've got three lessons that are fieldwork based in in progress in geography um, but we've also got progress in fieldwork where we provide nine ready-made fieldwork inquiries uh, containing instructions and data for students to successfully carry out fieldwork in the local area or indeed in the classroom uh, here are those three lessons in progress in geography so this is a review lesson to uh, the first lesson uh, one point first unit 1.10 um, and uh, the, the students follow a route um, uh, that pulls together this lesson pulls together all the skills they've developed uh, in that first unit as part of that review process in uh, unit four uh, which is on uh, weather and climate what is weather and climate there's a uh, field work activities which again consolidates what they've learned about in particular uh, different sorts of weather and depressions and anticyclones and they can either uh, use the data that's provided here or they could actually if the school has a uh, data logging weather station uh, they could conduct their own field work um, for this activity and the third is how to conduct a, a river inquiry to test Bradshaw's model um, and uh, some data is provided here again so they could use that data or it's something the school might want to uh, want to develop uh, themselves. Um, in the um, application of geographical skills, they inquire working like a geographer from the first page. There's a section in here that says uh, you will uh, uh, also progress your ability to write and speak like a geographer, communicating your ideas using a wide range of geographical terminology introduced in lessons and highlighted in the glossary. We've completely revamped the glossary and we've now identified we've got three sections in the glossary. The first section is about the big ideas of geography. So those concepts um, are defined here. We've also um, thought about and developed command words. Uh, so we've got a list of those command words. And then this is the beginning of the geographical words and terms section of the glossary. And on boost, 
we have flashcards um, which you can use in your lesson. So here's a, an image of a occluded front and you click the arrows and it flips over and gives a definition. So we've got lots of those and we're planning to develop more of those within Boost. And also in Boost, uh, we have key term lists uh, which, which students can use. So we've again, this is another example of how if our curriculum intent is that we want pupils that can work, think and write like a geographer, then we need to develop a curriculum that supports that. So the work we've done on the glossary is very much supporting uh, students in trying to develop their geographical vocabulary. And here is the uh, summary of Boost. This is the, the, the things that Boost has to offer. So uh, 18 schemes of work, 180 lesson plans, uh, 180 uh, present lesson presentations, PowerPoint presentations that that link resources that provide the resources that are in the book on on the on the lesson. The answers to all the activities are provided in the lesson plan and in the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, there are over a thousand links to enhance the work in the lessons. Quite often, many of those uh, quotes from people, uh, those statements from people are also provided as video links. So you can link them as link a video of the person actually saying those things. Uh, and they're also those links are in the lesson plans, but also embedded many of them embedded into the lesson presentations. There are video clips to 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 demonstrate things. There are into interactive maps and diagrams, uh, animations of key processes, the flashcards and so on. I've already mentioned there are 400 core worksheets, 180 support worksheets, 170 support worksheets. Uh, and then another, a new feature, a, a homeworks, uh, which, which often link video and animations for pupils to work on at home. So a wide range of, uh, uh, of things there within Boost, which we will continue to update on a regular basis. Let's have a look at some examples of the Boost. So if we look at a lesson plan uh, from this sample, so you've got the about the lesson, What's the prior learning from the previous lessons? There's the learning objectives. Here's the key terminology for that lesson, the command words that are used, and then links to the range of activities that are available on Boost. Uh, creates a need to know with a link to a suggestion of linking to uh, a particular uh, videos that will uh, capture students' imagination. The, the left hand side, the left hand column shows the activity. Uh, and the learning objective that it links to uh, and the right hand column provides the the answers to those activities uh, the final column a uh, rough estimates of how much time uh, each activity will take so that's an example of a lesson plan leading to the plenary which might have a stretch and challenge or might be an activity where pupils are being uh, asked to uh, answer the inquiry question here's an example of the PowerPoint presentation. This is, a, I think it's a PowerPoint presentation for uh, introducing sustainable development goals. All right, so I'm just watching it in the window rather than uh, rather than opening it up. So introductory slide first starts with the resources that are in the lesson, the learning objectives, uh, key terms that have been introduced. Uh, starts with a recall activity from earlier lesson that connects to that particular lesson uh, with the answers provided that you can take out if you don't uh, have them inside. Here there's an example of uh, video links. Uh, this is a UN video link that introduces the sustainable development goals. Uh, and then the various activities uh, that are in the book are provided with the, the illustrations and quotes here uh, highlighted. So you have uh, one of those PowerPoint presentations for every lesson. There are also uh, animations. So this is from uh, unit uh, 18.2, um, explaining uh, the um, indicators of a warming climate. So we, we're really, we really think these are a useful addition because it deconstructs the diagram and then builds it up for students. So we're really hoping that uh, possibly we'd like to do some more of those. Um, this is uh, an, an interactive activity. This is lesson 12.7 about colonisation in Asia. Colonisation is introduced 
in the uh, chapter eight, the development chapter, uh, in terms of um, one of the four theories of developments that presented. This is this is the theory of development as exploitation, uh, and uh, for each of the regional studies, uh, we look at how people feel about uh, that exploitation, um, culminating in the final unit on climate change, probably the ultimate exploitation, uh, uh, and looking at uh, the the term climate colonialism. Uh, this this activity uh, helps pupils to um, to to look and analyse uh, one of the particular sources. Um, give you an example of a, an activity sheet. Uh, so this is one for Unit Ten on sustainable cities. Uh, so supports on. Uh, for, for students there in thinking about sustainability in London um, and unit 17 looking at uh, pupils people's choices chapter 17 is all about human choice uh, very much building on the thinking of Elin Kelman uh, who wrote this really excellent book disaster by choice uh, so the chapter begins with him talking about uh, what he means by that <coughs> and uh, then we have various case studies of choices that humans have made that have had consequences for other people. Um, so this takes you through this is an extra activity, research activity on risks in Chile. And then we have knowledge tests um, for each unit uh, with the marks available and the marks scored and uh, you can keep for the students. And then an example of a homework activity. So this homework activity starts with a video clip about what is a geographer, uh, reminds the students what they've learnt uh, before they, they do a series of uh, activities about uh, about those, um, their, their learning in that particular lesson. So that's a, that's a quick run through. Um, I, I hope you find it useful. If you have any questions, um, oh, the one thing I haven't mentioned is assessment. Sorry, I've just noticed that uh, we have um, 90 automatically marked tests. Uh, we have 18 formal written summative assessments. Uh, and as we start to de further develop um, boost, we'll, we'll be thinking about how we add to that. And uh, we're, we're really open to suggestions from users about how we can actually improve the offer in boost. Uh, this is one, one of the ways in which uh, uh, we can interact with, with teachers, but also one of the ways we can keep the uh, material in, in uh, progress in geography uh, relevant and up to date. I hope you found that uh, quick introduction uh, to what progress in geography has to offer and um, welcome to, uh, welcome to pro the world of progress in geography. Thank you very much for, for attending and listening. Thank you so much for your time. If you'd like more information about the series, please visit our website. The URL is on the screen now. If you'd like a quote, free trials, or if you have any questions, please email geography at holder.co.uk with your school name and postcode, and we'll put you in touch with your local consultant. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>